eight fun here. Bro, y'all can feel that, right? I see my mic moving a little bit. Like, y'all can hear that. Bro, it's like a crazy uh, thunderstorm going on down here. I even got like an alert. I thought it was an amber alert. I was like, bro, what do you want me to do at 11 o'clock at night of some girl getting kidnapped? I have, what am I gonna do? Anyway, um, that's not why we're here. Casual, drop. Why this might be the most disrespected job on earth. What could that be? Initial thought, zookeeper. You really don't think about how dangerous that job is. Not, wait, do they actually go into the, they have to go into the habitat unless they got like a, I'm pretty, by now they gotta have some type of way of being able to like feed and clean it without risking their life. So I, I, I really don't think zookeepers are that dangerous of a job. <clears throat> but I could be wrong. But nonetheless, we're not here for my rambling. We're here for the video. So if you're new, like, comment, subscribe. If you're not new, just keep coming back. Subscribe for what are you doing? And uh, let's get to it. Bro just flexed on him. And he's, so there's a lot of talk what the about. Hell Any, so there's a lot of talk about man versus bear. Would you choose the man? Would you choose the bear? How about we talk about that time women chose gorillas? This what? is Shibani. Shibani is a 27 year old living in the Hiyashiyama Zoo in Nagoya, Japan, where his face card went viral and caused a direct increase in the number of female visitors. Call him George the way he had these women curious. Last name Clooney, because that's the main guy they compared him to. Oh, and if you couldn't tell, Shibani is also a 400 plus pound primate with a perpetual. Okay. Imagine getting compared to a gorilla. Crazy. Crazy work. Crazy work. This is this is crazy. You can't put me right there. You just can't. Because at that point, it turns. <laughs> you, just <can't. laughs> you just can't do it. Um, bro, why is bro kind of handsome? I kind of see the vision. But this is bestiality, you freaks. Ain't that what it's called? You fucking, you want to fuck a gorilla? He's not human yet. Wait. A million years to leave off. That's name Clooney, because that's the main guy they compared him to. Oh, and if you couldn't tell, Shibani's also a 400 plus pound primate with a perpetual pump. Not only that, he's a loyal husband with two wives and children. That's a family man being lusted after. Some of the words used to describe him were punky, heartthrob, metrosexual, spornosexual. I didn't even know what that meant. One article even asked, quote, would you go for a romp in the jungle with Shibani? Huh? A sinful liaison, that's Harambe. Had women hot and bothered, that's Femme Flambe. Call him Susan B. Anthony the way he had women showing up to the pole. Just kidding, real ones know gorillas ain't packing anything but a room. But yeah, Shibani's looks transcended the laws of nature, and if I had a nickel for every time a woman's feelings towards a gorilla made headlines, I'd have two nickels which is too many more than I should have. One woman was a frequent visitor at the Dijar de Bladorp Zoo in the Netherlands, and her favorite was a silverback named Bikido. Up to four times a week, she'd find him, make direct eye contact, and smile. I'm not even gonna explain how much of a gorilla middle finger that is. Keepers tried to warn her, but she didn't listen. Her and Bikido, they, they had a connection. Oh, they connected all right. One day she smiled again and called him constipated because Bikido was not letting that shit slide. Bikido broke out and would proceed to put the beats on her like Afro music. And he jumped over a water-filled ditch to do it. Gorillas hate water. Kido was fed up. He was calmly escorted back home where he lived well for another 16 years until he passed away in April of 2020. Bro, normally they would've put him down. They ain't put him down, that's crazy. He was like, hey, she kept talking. I pressed the issue. what I do wrong? I'm gonna go back home, man. Live out the rest of my day. I told her, I told her. I told her, quit talking now like I ain't gonna do nothing. <laughs> he stood His get back on his biggest fan slash op was immortalized as a word of the year. And the woman, who I originally felt bad for, apparently didn't get hit hard enough. So if y'all don't know, my first aspiration in life was to be a zookeeper. I even had a state-of-the-art custom virtual simulator to prepare. Yeah, that dream flatlined pretty quick. Bro. I even had a state-of-the-art custom virtual simulator. Bro, they got another one of these, like an updated version. I got I had the ro I got the roller coaster version of this damn game. Roller coaster tycoon. My creative mind is not that great to be building a roller a theme park. But hey, I'll be on it. To prepare. It's yeah, that dream flatlined pretty quick for reasons. But this video is going to be about probably what my life would look like as a zookeeper. The weird stories, the dirty secret. This video is going to be about pro to prepare. Yeah, that dream flatlined pretty quick for reasons. Damn. It could be worse. You know, you could be getting paid 
twelve ninety to put your life on the line. I guess. Uh, damn. I mean, damn. I didn't, I didn't know zookeepers was down that terrible. You think zookeepers need to get paid a little more? Truly, everybody needs to get paid a little more. But like zookeepers, I really don't know the job description of a zookeeper. Let's look. Oh hell no! I'm not getting paid. A zookeeper responsibilities for ensuring the care and well-being of animals within a zoo facilities. Key duties and responsibilities include animal care, feeding, providing clean water, and administering medication as needed. Habitat maintenance, cleaning and maintaining animal enclosures, including removing waste and debris, observating and documenting, monitoring animal behavior, health, diet, veterinary. What the? F I mean, if you really love animals, I guess. But I love animals and I'll probably do it. I just wish I was getting paid more. But this video is going to be about probably what my life would look like as a zookeeper. I'm the capping. Weird stories, the dirty secrets, and the random trivia the average person would probably know nothing about. Like, what is the most dangerous animal in the zoo? Like, actually, the answer just might surprise you. Uh, actually, probably not. Born Free USA has a database where you can look up incidents involving exotic animals in America, and a Born Free USA. Independence, Kansas. Independence, Kansas. The Kansas Zoo was temporarily evacuated when a siren brown bear attempted to escape from her enclosure. The city of Independence Center. When the fuck was this? 2024? Okay, first off, I live in Kansas. Kansas City. Independence is like 20, 30 minutes from where I am. I didn't know Independence had a fucking zoo. It was a Kansas City Zoo. Yeah, the Kansas City Zoo is not... Well, technically, it might be Independence, depending on where the Independence... Well, no, it's right here. It's still Kansas City. It has a database where you can look up incidents involving exotic animals in America. And if you search up animal attacks by any species in any state in an AZA-accredited zoo, you'll see that the number one culprit are big cats. Because out of 101 recorded injuries, they caused 46 or 38%. Elephants were second at just over 17%, but if Bikitu proved anything, it's that a lot of them had it coming. Which is probably why primates earned bronze in brutality at 14%. Reptiles like Komodo dragons and bears like pandas got just over 4% each. 9% were marine attacks by animals like orcas, dolphins, and stingrays. And the remaining 13% were just other. Other being something like a kid falling into a rhino enclosure or a woman climbing into a giraffe pen and nearly getting kicked oh. off the census. Now take it with a grain of salt because I thought for sure zebras would be up there but they weren't even on the list. And I know for a fact at least a couple should. But these are attacks. I want to know what Zuby's most likely to put a halo on my head. Well, in the same database, if you looked at every time a person got put on a shirt at a zoo, accredited or not, big cats did it over 40% of the time, with elephants at a hair under 30, and surprisingly, bears barely even scratched at less than 9%. But here's the thing, if you look at non-accredited zoos, the big cat number grows to 47%, with bears and elephants at 16 apiece. And lastly, in accredited zoos, elephants actually took the lead at 47%, big cats were the suspect 33% of the time, and bears weren't even on the board. So if you're a zookeeper at a zoo that actually has its stuff together, statistically, if there's any animal that erases you, it's gonna be an elephant. And if the zoo's suspect, best believe a big cat might be your downfall. But also remember, if it does happen, it'll probably be your fault or your co-workers. Now, if you work at a zoo long enough, eventually Bro. does happen. She like, chew, your chew, fault chew, or your chew. <laughs> she now, if like you work at a zoo long enough, eventually some animal's gonna escape, whether it's a minor inconvenience like a bunch of meerkats or a code red dead the rights and merc on site like a chimpanzee. It's gonna happen, and the best reaction is proaction. So some zoos do escaped animal drills, but instead of actual animals, yeah. Yeah. One Japanese zoo will have workers cosplaying as an animal taking a cue from Madagascar and breaking out. Thank God, because I'm not even going to tell you what I- Okay, see, that's cute and all, but he not going to really- Whoever's under there ain't really finna have that animal mentality. Okay? That is not it. I thought this was. What the heck? But it's a pretty harmless way to remind everyone what to do when an animal gets out. That being said, this would be a tragic time to not be sober at the zoo. But what animal's the most likely to escape? In my non-professional online opinion, there's two. If you want to test how good a spot is at keeping the animal in, you should probably hire the man of the forest or the orangutan. 
Fu Manchu was an orang that nearly got an entire staff fired because there was a solid week where they would show up to work and the entire orangutan posse would be posted up outside. About a week was how long it took for them to realize that Fu had snagged a wire, hid it in his mouth most of the day, and used it to pick his enclosure lock when no one was looking. And Ken Allen was a hairy Houdini who got out so many times that the zoo had to hire rock climbers to find every possible point of exit, because they didn't know how he got out and Ken for sure wasn't about to tell him. And what did he do with all this freedom? Well, when he wasn't wandering the zoo looking at animals like everyone else, he was pelting rocks at another O-Rank named Otis, cause even a 95% vegetarian can make room for beef. The other animal's the red panda. Do your homework on how hard it is to keep this red-faced raccoon in. A quick Google search will tell you that a red panda escape has made the news at least once in 1978, 2005, 2007, 2008, 2009, 2012, 2013, and you know what, probably more. My favorite was Red Panda Rusty slipping out the Smithsonian and walking the streets of Washington DC completely unbothered. So yeah, if your job's keeping a ninja panda or a Cheeto flavored gorilla in check, you're gonna have a bad time. But some animals are a great time to work with and it's often not the ones you'd expect. Rhinos are legally blind trauma tanks that'll buck up to a butterfly. In a zoo, it's a two-ton Labrador with the personality of a lab dog. And they put the zoo in zoomies. Turkey vultures are unironically like precocious toddlers that'll follow their favorite keeper around and play games with them. And cheetahs might just be the most people-proof predator of them all. In fact, almost too much for their own good. Cheetahs get treated like the doormat of the savannah, and their life doesn't become a cakewalk in captivity. Oftentimes, the overgrown house cat is too anxious to even think about making more cheetahs. So. Some cheetahs get emotional support dogs. So the dogs are assigned yeah, to the cheetahs that. as cubs, and the idea is this they is become crazy. a bonded pair with the cheetah seeing Fido as a role model to mirror and take social cues from. It's literal emotional support, because if the introvert cat sees that the dog isn't stressed or pressed, it allows them to chill out, or at least enough to motivate them to multiply without a calculator. And to make it even more wholesome, a lot of zoos like the one in San Diego will use dogs <laughs> rescued from kill shelters. Definitely one of the top five animal friendships. And it's not even the only one in San Diego. This is Zari the Zebra, also from the San Diego Zoo. And this is her best friend, Sophia. You see, Zari doesn't just live there. She's one of the ambassadors for the zoo, spreading smiles and awareness. But I'm also guessing you can't really have your ambassador around other zebras, cause L let's just say that might not be the best influence. So in comes Sophia, a miniature Mediterranean donkey and Zari's roommate and best friend. To say they're inseparable would be a massive understatement. And while I can't exactly tell you who's influencing who, just know Zari and Sophia give any cheetah dog duo a run for their money. Now, speaking of role models, have you seen this video of a panda struggling to break bamboo? Well, that's Meng Er, and he's not struggling. The story goes, he was hand raised by humans his entire life, and while a 250 pound bear might have no problem snapping sticks, a weaker human will. So apparently years of watching his surrogates get humbled by a bamboo somehow taught him that that face is necessary to break it. You can even find videos where he breaks it, starts eating, realizes he forgot to struggle just to grimace and continue. Pandas are a lot of things and apparently good as Simon says is one of them. They're also by far the most expensive animal you'll see in a zoo. Any American zoo that wants a panda will have to pay a small annual leasing fee of up to a million dollars, along with 600,000 for every cub born there. Add the millions to build their enclosures and the thousands spent feeding them and the black and white bamboo bear is about five times more expensive than second place. And that's literally the biggest thing alive with legs. And best believe they know it, you might never meet a more high maintenance mammal. In 2014, the Chengdu research base set up a live stream so viewers could watch expecting mother, I oh these names are killing me, I Hin bring another panda into the world. It was then canceled after it was discovered she had faked her pregnancy. Somehow the same animal that got its brain nerfed by nature figured out that if they can play pregnant even after the hormones wear off, they can finesse preferential treatment. And they're not wrong, any future mother pandas are moved to a single with AC, they get round the clock care and more fruits and bamboo. Quite frankly, I don't blame the bears for working smarter. But it gets even crazier. Did you know pandas can be bougie? Mei Lun and Mei Hun were two pandas born and raised in the Atlanta Zoo, but were sent back to China in 2013. The only problem? They refused to eat any traditional Chinese meals, only American. They were not rocking with the Wo Thao. They wanted biscuits and cookies. And pandas aren't even the only ones to pull some stuff like this. Japan's Akone En was used to feeding their residents Aji, or Japanese horse mackerel. But thanks to inflation, they decided to cut costs by switching to a cheaper alternative, Saba. 
And wouldn't you know, the penguin with king in its name was not about to eat like a peasant since them and the otters refused to substitute. You see, that's the part of zookeeping they don't tell you. All that time spent preparing fish, slaving away while the stench of your profession dents your social life, just for an uppity tuxedo chicken to choose hunger strike. Man, you know they don't get paid enough for that. Literally the only compromise was mixing the cheap fish with the aji. As you can see, some animals are way more high maintenance than others, but some are too difficult to even exist in zoos. Think about it. Think of all the zoos you've ever been to and try to see if you can come up with any notable absences. Wait, wait, wait. Now we gotta think of the basic ones. Right, we got big cats. Do we have every big cat? We got lions, we got tigers. I don't think I, don't think I ever seen a jaguar, but have you ever seen a jaguar in the zoo? But like, oh, that's too easy. But what would be high maintenance and something that you would never see at a zoo? Does it fly? Does it? I'm thinking of something that flies. But what if it's something basic? This is gonna be something stupid. I can't, I'm gonna just go uh, brown bear. I, I feel like you need brown bear. Okay, time's up. When's the last time you saw a moose in a zoo? For a lot of y'all, including me, probably never. You've probably seen bison, bears, bobcats, cougars. Y'all know I could speak on wolves, <laughs> but no moose. Why? Moose have specific diets, they're built like a tank and a horse like one moose, and really, you can do everything right, they can still pass tense in a few years. And apparently feeding an antler warrior that can't even survive a president's term is a bad investment. So are leopard seals, you'll likely never see the op of happy feet in a zoo. Narwhals can literally die of social anxiety so they're out. Tarsiers sometimes seppuku themselves in captivity so that's a no-go. And they say dietary restrictions are why proboscis monkeys are rare in zoos. I call bull shark, it's definitely cause schnazzy might be the most inappropriate animal to take your kids to see. And yes. My head's here for a reason. I'm not about to catch an age restriction over an overexposed lipstick dispenser. Or they could just use fake animals, cause it's not like that hasn't happened before. In 1987, a zoo in China was what? exposed for painting a sun bear and presenting it as a panda. That's a sun bear, by the way. In 2018, a zoo in Cairo did the same, except they had a donkey and zebra face. 2013, and we're back in China, except this controversy was about their resident African lion. There's a lion. Did y'all even try? But by far, my favorite counterfeit creature story is... These dogs are advertised as panda dogs. They're just dogs. Yeah, I can okay. see it. According to Chinese state media, That's the kind of cute. that dyed the dog's fur to look like pandas to fill in the blank of not having actual pandas. You know, if I took time out of my day and spent my hard-earned money to go see a panda and got this, I'd probably go and spend more. Man, they got pandas from Timu. I can't even be mad. So obviously people are usually happy to see animals at zoos, but... You ever wonder how the animals feel? Well, someone did, and a study from Nottingham Trent and Harper Adams University studied over 250 animals in zoos to see how their behaviors changed around human company. Using hours of observation and research, they found that the animal most excited to see people at zoos, and I really hope this is true, were elephants. Elephants showed the most positive reactions to large groups of people, becoming more active, more playful, and overall seeming to have a better time when humans were around. The other people happy animals included cheetahs, jaguars, penguins, grizzly bears, I just said jaguars bears, aren't a cow called a batang, servals, and black tailed That goes to dogs. show you how long and it's on been the other since side, I've been the animals to that seemed to like human company the least were hedgehogs, ostriches, marsupials like kangaroos, ungulates like giraffes and antelopes, and probably most random of all, the tuatara. They have three eyes and apparently none of them want to see us. As for the rest, the vast majority of animals had no reaction. The study does raise an interesting question and that's how the pandemic affected zoo animals. Believe it or not, some animals actually started to miss people. The worldwide panoramic left elephants confused and disappointed, birds like kias and cockatoos missed the attention, and you even had apes like chimps actively looking for missing visitors. And while the shutdown gave us gems like penguins exploring empty aquariums, or a sea lion getting introduced to a tegu, by far the best story to come out was what happened in a Japanese aquarium. You see, the eels in Tokyo Sumida Aquarium were used to people, but the pandemonium turned them back people shy. Bro, I heard eels, eels now hide in the sand just appear. Or someone would walk past. Hey, the huh? problem is, that made it almost impossible to check up on them and keep them healthy. The solution was, the aquarium asked people to FaceTime their eels to re-familiarize them with people, like some exposure therapy. There was a legitimate time where you could have gone on a date with an antisocial eel, and the worldwide Panera brought a lot of bad, but this was definitely a bright spot. But now, zoos are back open, so here's some hacks to get the most out of your experience. Animals are going to be most active on cooler, cloudier days, and they usually peak as soon as the doors open. Also, you're going to want to aim for a random weekday, since the less crowded, the better. Try it. If you can be there the next overcast 10 a.m. on a Tuesday, I swear you'll see a different zoo. And if you're a cat person, you might want to wear some Calvin Klein. No, seriously, the Klein is a favorite for cats of all kinds, from cheetahs to cougars, from lions to leopards. 
In fact, researchers have caught wild jaguars on camera by dousing the trap in obsession for men. So next time you're at the zoo and end up in big cat country, go ahead and spritz some of the Klein and see what happens. But yeah, that's gonna do it for this video. I imagine I'm gonna get a couple comments disappointing to me for not blasting zoos for 15 minutes, that I can't possibly care about animals if I still go to them, here's my take. I've always said that zoos are capable of a lot of good and a lot of bad, but a lot of them are an invaluable resource for conservation and awareness. And while I agree, there are some species that are just not built for zoos. A majority of them are there because they literally would be worse off in the wild. Chevalsky's horse was basically halfway down the grave, but it was the work of zoos that helped bring them back from the brink. Same thing with the California condor, and about a dozen more. And spare thought for zookeepers are overworked, underpaid, usually overqualified. And like I said, the smell isn't just something they leave at the office. Not all zoos are created equal, and it's at best lazy and at worst almost dangerous to put them all in the same boat. But I'ma stop yapping, drink water, hug your mother, support your local zoo, just make sure it's accredited. Matter of fact, give a zookeeper a hug, who knows how much they need it. And I'ma see y'all in the next one. See, that, that was my thing with zoos. It's like, you can't really say zoos are bad. If an animal is endangered, then boom. You know, a zoo can protect it, help it, rebuild its species. So, so like a zoo can really be helpful. Yeah, a zoo can, you know, help endangered animals and, and all the rest of that. It's just really a thin line between we're helping, but this is also for our own amusement and money, but we're also helping because this animal will be terrible out in the wild. Like, you know, it's, you really can't say zoos are terrible, but then you can say they're not perfect. They're not terrible, they're not perfect. But sometimes they are helpful. See you on the next one. Peace.